What's going on, family? This is your lead pastor, Pastor RJ2, once again, um, coming before you to speak a word um, for the season that we are in. I want to say thank you for coming on in on um, this morning. I want to say thank you for your continual um, support of me as lead pastor here at Jesus Center. So I'm going to jump right in on, to, on this morning with the message, and I want to talk about Oh, first, I want to talk about um, the disease of leprosy, and I'm going to be coming from and dealing with the the, uh, the book of Luke, Luke chapter 17, where Jesus uh, meets the ten lepers. But I want to start off with something that that I heard that I that I read rather from um, the author uh, by the name of Beth Moore um, in her book, Jesus, the one and only. She tells on an occasion uh, when she had to be near a modern day leper colony, something within her had always wanted to minister in a leper colony. So her trip overseas had given her the first opportunity to be near this place. She walked by the entrance three times. She saw those who were suffering. She begged herself for a chance to go inside. But she could not. Here's the reason. The smell overwhelmed her. She could not work up the stomach to go inside the colony. She could not bear the thought of witnessing for the Lord, but at the same time becoming ill. The trip passed and she was not able to go inside to witness. The disease leprosy, it attacks the body, leaving sores, missing fingers, missing toes, damaged limbs. The disease can take 30 years to run its course. And in that time span, entire limbs can simply fall off. And one last thing, lepers tend to roam together, looking for food, begging for assistance from a great distance, learning to yell in loud voices, both from the need to warn others and to beg for help. Listen to Luke chapter 17. And I'm going to be reading verses 11 through 19. Listen to what it says. It says, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off and they were, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus master have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Family, it is good to be thankful for the material items, but there are some things that are more valuable than material. You can't pray, pay for a peace of mind. You can't pay for a good night's sleep. What monetary value can you put on good health? There are some things money cannot buy. In verse 12 and 13, we see a sickly congregation traveling together. But the question that I have is, how did they know about Jesus and that he was a healer, all while living in an outcast community outside the camp. Maybe the word grew so much about his miracles that they had heard about blind Mar Bartimaeus. Maybe they heard about the leper who was cleansed. Or maybe they heard about the centurion servant who was sick of the palsy. Or maybe they heard about the woman with the issue of blood. Family, I don't know what they heard, but I do know that they mixed what they heard with what they believed. See, it doesn't matter how big your Bible is, family. It doesn't matter if you got a title 
or how long you've been in church. All you have to hear is something about Jesus mixed with what you have heard, with what you believe. And God can change your life in an instant. I want to help somebody out right here. Family, you are not what you are going through. You are not your condition. You may have cancer, but that's not who you are. You may have diabetes or high blood pressure, but that's not who you are. You may have arthritis or sickle cell, but that's not who you are either. Family, you may be struggling with a lot of things, but guess what? That's not who you are. You are a child of the most high God. So we need to lay hands on ourselves and say, you know, we, I am above and not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. See, family, you are blessed and you are highly favored. You got to get that in your spirit. Sometimes you just got to lay hands on yourself, you know, and just speak these words of affirmations in your life when things are looking bad. And you don't have the answer. You got to continue to encourage yourself just like David did. So family, in this text, we start with 10 men who have the worst disease of their day. And yet in this account, the 10 men encounter Jesus and say, we want to be well. And Jesus respond, go and show yourselves to the priest. The reason why Jesus told them to go to the priest is because in those times, it was up to the priest to inspect the body, to test it, and then announce the person healed. So, but fam, when I was reading this, this kind of defies what I call logic. <laughs> because we have to realize that their bodies were no better off than it had been 10 minutes earlier when they first spotted Jesus. And yet, they hit it off in search of the priest. But the text says that as they went, they were healed. But in order for the miracle to happen, these men had to start walking in faith before they couldn't see any change. He tells them to show yourselves to the priest. But in actuality, he was telling them to act as if they were already healed. He was saying this right here. In effect, I want you to react to a reality that is not yet actual. Jesus is saying, I want you to live in the presence of the promise, even though you don't have it in your possession. See, some of you need to thank him, even though you don't have the answer prayer yet. Can you take your future praise and give him a right now? Thank you. See, some of you need to open up your mouth and say something because some of you don't have the job yet. See, some of you may need to raise your hands up in, in praise, even though you haven't got the what? The degree yet. And some of you may need to do both. Lift up your hands and open up your mouth and say something because you haven't received what? The miracle yet. But you got to act like what? It's already here. So do I have anybody out there this morning? That's not going to wait until the battle is over, but you are going to thank him right now, even in the midst of your circumstances. I want to rewind back before I go any further. Rewind back for a few moments. The text says in verse 11 that as he went, who went? Jesus. Or as he was on his way. See, we need to understand God knows how to do some things just by being on the way. That's how the woman with the issue of blood got healed, because Jesus was on the way to somewhere else. She just got in the way. But listen, family, if Jesus is on the way then you just need to get in the way, because if you get in the way then you may receive what you've been asking for, how many of you out there? Besides me that do not have it all together. I don't have I don't have it all together. I don't have it all together. My wife doesn't have it all together. And definitely my children don't have it all together. But guess what? I'm going to thank him like we already have it all together. I'm going to give him what a hallelujah right now. Uh, anyhow, praise. 
Because guess what? Even though I don't see it, I am speaking my desired future, and I'm, but I'm speaking it right now, even though I have not seen it. The text says this secondly, and I want to bring this point out. If they didn't have faith in what Jesus had said, they would probably have begged for a miracle after he gave them the command. But they didn't do that. They didn't ask for a miracle. But here it is. They asked for mercy. Go back and check the text in your spare time. They didn't question Jesus command. They responded because they believed it. As they went, their skin starts to clear up. See, sometimes family on our walk and sometimes on our journey, as we go, some things will start just to fall off of us So, as we go. You got to get this because this is the main point. If you don't get anything else, here's the main point right here. But as they went, one heel leper decided to go back. As you study the text on the lepers, they didn't lack faith because they believed and they didn't lack obedience because they were on their way to the priest. But the nine lack one thing, and that wasn't factored into the equation. Let me just try to break it, break it down for you right quick. I want to bring out something that I found in my, my studying of this passage of scripture. In those days, the Jews and the Gentiles didn't get along. They didn't mix. Luke, the writer specifically called the one a foreigner because he was a Samaritan Gentile. If the nine were Jews, they had to go to Jerusalem to see the priests. But the Samaritan had to go to Mount Gerizim to see the priest. What this means is the Samaritan had to go a lot further than the Jews in the opposite direction. Jesus told all 10 to go and show yourself to the priest. But the text says the Samaritan stopped and came back to Jesus because he said within himself, there is something I got to do first. And that is the turn around. That one, that Samaritan, caught himself in the midst of his celebration, in the midst of his shout, in the middle of his hallelujah, and returned to Jesus. He reversed his steps. He put the priest on hold. He put his family on hold and came back to the source and the reason for his celebration. The Samaritan figured out something, and the text said that he came back with a loud voice. The same loud voice he shouted out with leprosy with the same volume and the same intensity that he used to glorify God. He then lay prostrate on his face at, the Je at Jesus' feet, and then he thanked them. This is what the Holy Spirit showed me about this passage that reveals another title of who Jesus is. In Hebrews 5, 9, listen to what it says about Jesus. It says, and having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Called by God as what? The high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 4 and 14 says, seeing then that we have a what? A great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Family, Jesus is the high priest and he is the highest of all high priests and there is nobody higher. As the nine went to the high priest, the one came back to the highest of all priests. Jesus told him, just like he told the one with the issue of blood, your faith has made you whole. See, family, as long as the miracle is on the surface or on the altar, it's nothing but cleansing, nothing but cleansing. But when the miracle touches your heart, it's healing. See, miracle brings cleansing. But healing brings wholeness. Let me bring this to a, to a close right here. 
The ten had faith and they had obedience, but the nine lacked gratefulness and thanksgiving. Jesus never commanded that any of them express thankfulness to God or return to him. But nevertheless, that is what Jesus expected. I'm bringing it to a close. How many out there know what this is right here? This is something from the ancient days. A lot of young people um, probably wouldn't probably wouldn't know what what this what this is. This is what called like a, a, a tape recorder, a small little boom box, so whatever you want to call it. But on on this right here, it has a a, a tape deck on it, and you can just pop the tape in, cassette tape in, and push play or whatever. And I can remember when I was when I was younger. And we had to to get music. A lot of us couldn't go to the to the stores and buy fresh new. We record off the radio. So we would just listen by the radio. And just when our song come on, we hit the button, we hit record. And guess what? Once the song finished, we hit pause. And if we got any any stuff on there that we didn't want, we'll go back and we'll edit it and erase it off of there and wait for the next song. And while we as we finish the whole tape. We had we had a whole tape of our favorite music. But guess what? When it came to the end or to the end of the song that I wanted to hear, guess what I had to do? I had to push stop. And when I push stop, I then I had to rewind it. I had to rewind it back. And then I had to push play once again. That's all. It's all ancient. But guess what? This is what we had to do. So guess what, family? Just like the text in Luke 17, they came to Jesus. Jesus stopped. He told them and gave them a command to do what to do. They left, went on their way. But the one, the one of the ten, he stopped. He reversed his step. He put it in rewind. He came back to Jesus and then he thanked them. And then Jesus said, you know what? Your faith has made you whole. And then he pushed the play button and went back on his way. See, family, sometimes we got to do the same thing. The word of God said that sometimes that we got to be stirred up by the way of our remembrance. Sometimes we got to stop what we're doing. Even in the midst of the turmoil, even in the midst of when our backs against the wall, when we, when we have fell down and got to get back up, sometimes we just got to stop, take a moment, push the rewind button, remember all that God has done for us in the past. He has brought it from that point to this point. And if God did it then, guess what, family? He can do it now. See, sometimes we just got to put it on pause, stop what we're doing, rewind, and let it play back in our minds. And then we can get back going with our lives. Stop, rewind, and play. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Father God, for this word, a simple word that's dealing with the 10 lepers and leprosy. Yes, the 10 got their cleansing, but only the one was made whole because he stopped he put it in rewind, put his steps in reverse, came back to the source of the celebration, the source of his healing, his source of being made whole, and he just thanked him. Sometimes, family, we got to do the same thing. And Lord, I ask that you help us remember those times that you have done it for us in our past. And you have done it over and over and over again. And if you have done it then, you're sure enough to do it now. So, Father God, we are thanking you in advance, Father God. Even though we may be in the middle of something right now, Father God, we're going to thank you for what is to come. Lord, I thank you for this word on this morning. And I pray, Father God, for those that have been listening in, that they can take something from this message on today and apply it within their lives. I thank you for what you have done what you're going to do in us, to us, and through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you, Father, for allowing me this short time to speak a word in season to you, to be able to help encourage you 
on your journey, on your path to help you keep moving and continue to put one foot in front of the other. God got you, family, and he loves you. And I pray that I hope I see you back here same time, same place on next week. God bless.